The other main um, body for whom price elasticity demand might be a useful concept is the government. The government imposes indirect taxes, and it does that for a variety of reasons. Um, it may want to influence the pattern of demand, but one of the reasons um, is it wants to raise revenue. And uh, if it wants to raise the largest amount of revenue, then when it imposes a tax, what it's got to do is it's got to impose taxes on those goods that are relatively price inelastic. And the reason is, when it imposes a tax, the firm will obviously want to increase the price to pass that tax on to the consumer. Um, so, when prices rise, the government would rather we kept on buying those products, yeah, so that, you know, so that we, we continue to pay the tax. So you might well think that taxes on you know, cigarettes and petrol and alcohol um, are, in, are intended to, um, to reduce consumption because of the negative external costs they produce. More cynical individuals might say that we tax that those get taxed high because they are inelastic in demand and therefore raise more revenue for the government. The best way of illustrating this is um, is by way is by way of an example. Um, and if we look if, if we look at how um, how taxing um, products works, yeah, then let's let's suppose first of all that we have if we try and do it side by side. Let's suppose we have first of all a product where demand is price. Inelastic. So we've got a relatively steep demand curve, but the, the key point is we're in the bottom half. We have a supply curve, which, if you remember, is the marginal cost um, of the firm. There's 100 units. There's say 20 pounds. Now let's suppose um, let's suppose that um, let's suppose the government imposes a significant tax, and let's suppose it imposes a tax of. Ten pounds per unit um, on the business. So the business, every every unit the business sells, is now going to have to pay ten pounds to the government. Um, the consequence of that then is that the firm's marginal costs, the cost of an additional unit, the cost of each unit, rises by ten pounds. So there, originally the firm wanted say twenty five pounds. Now it's going to want thirty five pounds. There. The firm wanted ten pounds. Now it's going to want twenty pounds. There, the firm wanted fifteen pounds. Now it's going to want twenty-five pounds. The entire supply function curve is shifted by the amount of the tax. That ten pounds there is T, which is the tax per unit. Now, what we can see, therefore, yeah, um, um, is that the equilibrium price has been driven up. Yeah, firms have attempted to pass that onto the consumer. Quantity demand has fallen to about you know, um, 80. But the interesting, the interesting question is, well, what's happened to price? Students generally think the price has gone up by £10, but that's not actually the case, because firms face competition in the market. They may not be able to push price up by the entire amount of the tax. And you can see that quite clearly. Each one of those gaps is £10. So that gap is therefore £10. So therefore, the new equilibrium price must have risen by less than £10. That looks like about £8. So the firm has managed to push price up to £28. Um, it still has to pay £10 to the government. The government couldn't care less yeah, what, whether the firm has passed it on to the consumer or not. Yeah? So the firm receives £28 from the consumer. It then has to give £10 to the government, leaving the firm with... Eighteen pounds per unit itself, and this allows us to. We can show a number of things now. Yeah? Firstly, we can show the total tax revenue to the government. The government is taxing at ten pounds per unit. It does it on eighty units. So tax is ten pounds per unit times eighty units. Eight hundred pounds. Effectively, the consumer is paying most of this tax. From the consumer's point of view, price used to be twenty pounds. Now is £28. 80 units are being bought, so the consumer is paying tax an extra £8 on 80 units. Yeah? So the consumer is paying that proportion um, of the tax. The producer isn't coming off so badly in this case um, because demand hasn't fallen that far and it's only paying £2 of the tax. That proportion of the tax is the bit that's paid by the producer because from their point of view they used to receive £20 and now they only receive £18 and so therefore um, the tax is mainly paid by the consumer and the government 
Well, we're relatively happy because what we can see is that most of the yeah, most of the consumers are still buying the product. If we contrast that, we do, if we still do if we still do ten pound tax, yeah, but if we contrast that with a more price elastic demand curve, if we try and get roughly the same starting point, but we change the gradient of the demand function to be more elastic. I'm trying to get roughly the same supply curve like that. If we do the same thing, again, supply is, you know, supply, supply is marginal cost. If we do the same thing, then impose a £10 per unit tax, then again, the supply curve, the firm's marginal costs increase by £10, so that's £10, that's £10, that's £10. What we can see is that there's a big difference here. Demand has fallen far further to maybe 50 units compared with the 80 units that it was before. Again, the original price was £20. That distance there reflects the tax per unit because it's the same as that distance and it's the same as that distance and so on. Um, but what we see now then is that that looks more like about £4. The equilibrium price only increases by four pounds, and as a result, the firm is only getting to keep 14 pounds. And we see, therefore, that there are two things going on here. Firstly, the government's revenue is now only 50 units times 10 pounds. The government's revenue is only 500 pounds compared with 800 pounds before. And secondly, the producer is now paying a far, far higher proportion of the tax. From the consumer's point of view, price has only gone up by four pounds on the 50 units that they now buy. From the producer's point of view, this is very bad news. They're only getting 24 pounds from the consumer. They're having to give 10 pounds to the government, leaving them with only 14. So the producer's proportion of the tax is far greater, and the two combined give you the government's total tax revenue. So clearly, if the government taxes products which are priced inelastic in demand, then the government gets a far higher proportion, a far higher tax revenue. The other impact is the consumer pays more of the tax um, than the consumer. Although all of this is subject to the same limitations that we talked about when we talked about price elasticity demand in terms of its usefulness for firms.